right, is Dr. Ayyappan Vinayak, and uh, this is part of a web series of uh, a series of YouTube videos on patient education regarding shoulder injuries and shoulder ailments. So today we'll be speaking on uh, shoulder dislocations and uh, how do we do our decision making if a patient comes with a shoulder dislocation, what is the decision making, um, how do we decide that this patient requires a surgery and then what kind of surgery to be done. So before going into that, we'll be discussing of the, something about the shoulder anatomy, what are the parts of the shoulder and why it dislocates, the pathological anatomy. So the shoulder is basically a ball socket joint, you can see here. So we have a bone here called as a humerus bone, the bone of the arm and this is the arm and here we have the humerus bone. It forms a ball on top of it, the upper part. And this ball sits inside the socket. The socket is part of a bigger bone called as the scapula of the shoulder blade. And um, if you look at the picture, we can see that the ball, also called as the head of the humerus, this is the head of the humerus. This is much bigger than the socket. So the socket is much smaller. It is one third the size of the head. So this itself makes it a very um, unstable biomechanical construct. At the same time, if the socket was much bigger and the ball smaller, like as in a hip joint, it is much more stable and there are lesser chances of dislocation. So here, with this kind of construct, you know, it is possible that all human beings, in all human beings, there are chances of the shoulder slipping out. And the question is, why is that the shoulder does not dislocate in all human beings? And in this, why does it happen in only certain individuals? So, for that to understand that, we need to know that what are the other anatomical structures which help in stabilization. So, number one is if this is the socket, the black shaded area is a bony socket, the bone part of the socket. The body is adapted by giving a little more surface area by making a beading like structure, like uh, the windshield beading of your car. There is a Around, you can see this, this is a circular structure which goes around and slightly increases the surface area. Second is, it also provides ligaments which are belt like structures. If my shoulder like this, as in this, so this is a ball socket, you can see this band kind of structure going in the front. And here you can see the red. So these are ligaments which are belt like structures. You can see that they are spanning from the socket side to the ball side. So there is, it is, you know, there is the most important of these ligaments is called as the inferior glenohumeral ligament or the IGHL. It's got two bands, one in the front and one in behind the shoulder. So this acts as a hammock. That is, the two bands acts as a hammock, like this. It acts, acts as a hammock and prevents extreme movement and prevents extreme dislocations. So now. Um, whenever the hand goes into extreme position like this, this is the most common type of dislocation or dislocation injury, where the hand goes extreme position like this, goes out, as in external rotation in abduction, this movement is called as abduction and this is called as external rotation. When it goes like this, the head or the ball slips out of the socket, it goes out like this, it comes out like that. and in extreme range, what happens is the ligament tears off mostly from the socket side. And this is and this results in a pull off or an injury of the ligament and along with an avulsion of this beading like structure called as a labrum. So you can see that where exactly it is attached, you can see the IGHL here. The IGHL is attached around 4 to 6, six o'clock position in this area. And when it pulls off, what happens is it not only the ligament tears off, but also the labrum okay, or this part of the beading comes off. As in this, you can see now in this particular picture, I've taken off the head and we are uh, having an end on view of the socket. We are looking into the socket, the head has been removed. The socket is also called the glenoid, so you can see the glenoid of the socket here, and this is the ligament as in here, and ligament pulls off and it pulls off from this attachment over here. That is mostly from around uh, 4 to 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock position. So it tears off this position. And this lesion where it tears off, the IGHL tears off along with the labrum is called as a bankard lesion. 
So we have a bifurcation here. So now, how do we um, how do we uh, treat this? So if you have a Bankart lesion and if it is a first time dislocator and if the patient is not an athlete, we always give a patient a chance to uh, heal by himself or we do something called as conservative management where we rest the shoulder for some time and then you know we maybe for four weeks that would be a maximum time of four weeks and in four weeks we allow the ligament to heal up and then we send the patient for physiotherapy and gradually he recovers. This is an ideal treatment if the patient is not an athlete. If he is an athlete, then we don't have this opportunity or we don't give this chance okay, where we check and see if, might, if it might uh, you know, dislocate or heal up. So we, in athletes, if it is a first time dislocation, we have to operate and we have to fix back the ligament and the labrum from its detached position. And this repair or this, this method of repair is called as a bank card repair. It is a keyhole surgery where um, we put a camera inside the shoulder, we find out exactly where the tear is and uh, we just we fix it by um, a suturing technique with, a, with something called as anchors. So what are anchors? Anchors are implants used for repairing damaged shoulder or damaged shoulder ligaments. So how do we do that? So you can see it, it is earlier anchors used to be made of metal. So then it became modified as um, you know now we have metal, we have plastic and we have bone or bioabsorbable material. So now um, now it is now the science is so advanced that we don't have any kind of material here. It is just the threads which are used. And this kind of advanced suture, suturing or suture material or suture technique is called as all suture anchor where there is no material, there is no metal, plastic or bone kind of material, it's just a thread. One end of the thread is buried inside the bone, like this goes inside the bone, it gets buried in and it comes out. So we can see we use such anchors in these three positions like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 4.30 and the 6 o'clock position. So these positions, we bunny the anchor, bunny the thread, and this thread is used to, you know, go around the labrum, go around the tone structures, and we tie it down tightly, and then we allow this to heal. This is called as a bankart repair or an arthroscopic bankart repair.